Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode, one of my favorite companies for web hosting. I've been using them for eight years. And if you're trying to get up a Linux stack, uh, definitely give them a look. For $20 a month, I've been able to scale this to hundreds of thousands of views in a month on a Django platform. And you can see they have price points to fit pretty much anybody's needs from advanced calculations to just simple CRUD apps. Uh, you can do whatever you want with Linode. And I really recommend them over Azure and AWS for both service and price. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to talk about burnout in this industry and just give my personal thoughts on it. I've actually been burned out on and off a lot for, I, I would say, the last couple of years. And, um, and it was really nothing to do with the work that I was doing. And that's part of the reason for this video is like there's all kinds of reasons why you can be burned out. For myself, one of my biggest issues was being married for 14 years, having two children, and then going through a separation divorce. And that type of thing is literally life altering where you have a very difficult time coming in to work each day and then trying to be productive. And even though I was a good enough programmer to be productive during my lowest moments of all that, and I'm very grateful I did not lose my job during my lowest moments going through all of that stuff. But burnout is not just caused by personal issues. A lot of people associate it with depression. Even when I was productive and I was very depressed and I was very um, burned out, I was still able to be productive enough. But the difference between that productivity, you know, during that transition versus previous times is like I had no satisfaction out of any of the work that I was doing. Wh whatever sort of projects I was working on, if I was able to meet my deliverables or if I was able to write good code, even if I got complimented, or I had good year-end reports and things like that, I had no personal satisfaction from it. It was just this dark, dreary blandness. And um, <clears throat> there's just a lot of reasons for that. I mean, some of the other reasons... It, besides personal issues, I mean, it can be caused by a toxic work culture, just, you know, the daily grind of, of uh, you know, one sprint to the next in our agile methodologies and like the, in, the, the constant deadlines that you're always just moving the goalposts. As soon as you start feeling comfortable with something, you're moving on to something else. And, uh, and a lot of the times when we move on to something else, you have all this like excitement in the workforce and in many cases, I just don't feel it as much as I used to because I've seen this. I've played this game for a long time now. I've been doing this 10 years, and I've seen us reinvent the wheel time and time again. Another big cause of burnout is simply stretching yourself too thin, and not just with work that you might be taking on in the corporate work world. It can be like your side projects. It can be your personal obligations, whether it's, you know, mortgages and things like that. You know, you, you can only stretch yourself so far and, and accomplish so much. We only have so many waking hours each day before we're depriving ourselves of sleep, exercise, time spent with family and friends. This can be a very difficult field to get into. It actually kind of alters the way that we think. It alters our vocabulary. And we just, whether we like it or not, the longer you do this, the more you realize your brain patterns have really changed in the way that you see the world. One thing about this industry that I think can be troublesome for people like me, I'm 38 years old. I've been, I'm a self-taught developer. I've been doing this 10 years, like I mentioned. And there's a constant stream of new developers and that, that come in and, uh, and everybody's like over enthusiastic. And I've always been kind of like a pessimistic realist type of person where I kind of just see the world the way it is, in my opinion, versus like some sugar coated thing. And there's a lot of sugar coating in the programming field. And sometimes I can be excited about it. I can play the part. And other times I'm just like, fuck it. I, th this is ridiculous. Overall, coding is a very satisfying job. It's the best job I've ever had. It's the highest paying job I've ever had. But the money is not as important once you actually make it, especially when you're a junior developer. Or you're just learning. You're like, hey, I want to learn React and do this and that with it. Uh, and you think it's almost like gambling. It's like, you know, you pull that slot machine and you expect to win something big. And we're gambling with our time and our enthusiasm for different programming areas like libraries, technologies, frameworks, whatever, wherever we're spending our time, we're gambling that time and we don't get it back. 
And the longer you've been doing this, and like when you do get to that reinvention of the wheel, or you're just writing another crud app, just months on end, years on end, like that stuff can just ultimately burn you out. And I think that the way to try to fight that, in my personal opinion, for me, it's been to be a creative individual on the side. Like this YouTube thing is actually a pretty good escape for me. I sometimes feel that for people that have been doing this as long as I have, and in many cases, uh, a lot longer, I think eventually the, the, the thrill of coding goes away in the sense that like nobody really codes at that point for the thrill of coding. They're coding because it's a means to an end. They're, they're earning a paycheck. And ultimately, even though there's still a thrill in learning new technologies, when you become this senior developer and you don't really have anywhere else to move, then the thrill of coding, I think, just naturally fades because you start running out of destinations that you can go to with it. And this programming field can be frustrating as well because a lot of the people that are coming in to be your manager, your bosses, the ones they're hiring right out of college, these people don't seem to have a full grasp of the real world around them or what it's like to be a parent uh, or to pay even have a mortgage. Um, a lot of them are still living with their parents. And those type of people, those programmers, they're, they're all over the industry and they simply are not on the same level as somebody that does have those types of responsibilities. Burnout symptoms range from a lot of things, but from what I've seen, it's loss of motivation and passion for what you used to do, loss of hope and meaning in what you're doing, not feeling satisfied even when you succeed, having fatigue all the time, and that, that includes like bad moods, like anger, like if you're walking around your office like, fuck, I hate this place. You know, those are like burnout symptoms in my opinion, these constant negative feelings that are entering your head. I mean, a lot of that is not because your company sucks or your work is terrible. It's just simply the fact that life will kick you in the balls sometimes. We're looking at endless deadlines, endless changes to libraries out there, constant relearning. We could be dealing with toxic corporate culture and then, you know, obviously a lack of sleep and then all that stuff just kind of compounds into this, you know, this person that's just not as enthusiastic as they used to be. I do think positive reinforcement is something that is real. It's something that I've actually learned to do over time. I'm a very negative looking person. I, I, I worry a lot about a, a lot of different things. I guess it's anxiety or whatever. But over time, when it comes to my job, I simply don't worry about being fired anymore. Like I, I realize I'm going to land on my feet no matter what. It, it becomes harder, but the more you help others, the better it makes you feel. I don't want this to come off as negative or anything, but I do want to just mention that like it is a relatively common thing for people to be burned out. I was talking to an old guy the other day who has been a programmer for 35 years. And he said, let me tell you something about burnout. He's like, I've been doing this 35 years. He's like, I, I've been burned out for the last 30. And I thought, you know, he wasn't trying to be funny. Like he was being dead serious. Like he's been burned out for 30 years. And Ultimately, though, he's still collecting a paycheck and he doesn't find satisfaction in life through just coding and programming. He's able to do it as a means to an end and still go home each day. And he has things like boats. He goes fishing. He works on cars. So he has all kinds of hobbies. And some of us in this field probably need to have more hobbies than coding. Because if all you do is code day in and day out and your entire identity is based on what you do for a living, then I think ultimately that is just going to head you down uh, to a destination that you just don't want to be at. So always try to balance yourself out. Let me know what you guys think. I'm not an expert on this subject. I just know that being burned out is a very common thing in this industry, and there's a lot of reasons for it. These are just some of my personal perspectives on it. But anyway, I hope you guys all have a good night and take care. Bye.